a structure reduced to its components, bricks and concrete, steel and glass. This is the story of how Nobel Prize winners excavate matter, how they tear apart the tiniest component, how they take us into the atom and beyond. The steel bucket looks solid, but come inside. Magnified a thousand times, steel resolves into grains. Enter a grain, and here are atoms of ferrite iron, magnified a further hundred thousand times. The term atom is coined by the Greek philosopher Democritus. Atom means indivisible. We are built of atoms. So are liquids, gases, solids, all made from the 92 naturally occurring elements that constitute our world. Take salt, formed when sodium and chlorine interact. With chlorine atoms in green and sodium in gray, this is the building block of salt. Replicated and strung together, they make salt crystals. Water is one of the most common compounds. It combines hydrogen and oxygen. In every molecule of water, two atoms of hydrogen, here in white, link with one of oxygen, H2O. Even the air that we breathe is a cocktail of atoms. Four parts nitrogen, one part oxygen, and a dash of argon. Gases that mix, but don't interact. Molecules of oxygen in red and nitrogen in blue contain pairs of atoms. Argon in purple is a single atom. But Democritus is wrong. The atom is divisible. In France, Henri Becquerel establishes that some substances shed mysterious rays. His friend Marie Curie and her husband Pierre confirm the finding. The trio is awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics. They prove that atoms emit tiny bits of matter as electrically charged particles. The electron, with a negative charge and far less mass than an atom, is discovered by the British physicist Joseph John Thomson in 1897. He wins the Nobel Prize for Physics. Thomson's atom is like a plum pudding. Pieces of negative charge, his electrons, within a diffuse positive charge, the pudding. This man is skeptical of Thomson's model. Ernest Rutherford is a New Zealander working in Britain and one of the great scientific minds of the day. Rutherford has a new notion. It wins him the Nobel Prize for chemistry. His idea comes to light in a brilliant experiment. Rutherford discovers that when he fires a beam of particles at gold foil, most pass through, but a few bounce back, like bullets off tissue paper. He reasons something is rebounding those particles, a small, dense, central mass, a nucleus, something absent from Thomson's pudding through which all particles would pass. Here is the culprit. Imagine this tiny red marble is the nucleus of a hydrogen atom, a single positively charged proton. Rutherford shows that virtually all the mass of an atom is in its nucleus. It sits in empty space. With that marble as the nucleus, this stadium represents the size of the hydrogen atom. Its only other constituent is an electron, a pinhead at the back of the stands. Hydrogen is the simplest atom, one negative electron orbiting a nucleus of one positive proton. In more complex atoms, many electrons orbit a nucleus of many protons, electrical charges precisely balanced. The Danish physicist Niels Bohr modifies Rutherford's theory. Bohr wins the Nobel Prize for physics. He challenges the idea that electrons swarm round the nucleus in random orbits. In the hydrogen atom at the stadium, Bohr has the electrons circling the nucleus in a fixed, allowed orbit. Bohr's hydrogen atom offers the electron a choice of allowed orbits. Incoming radiation knocks the electron into a higher orbit. 
The electron emits a flash of energy as it quickly jumps back to its original inner orbit. The smaller the jump, the less energy released. In the more complex atom of iron, two electrons orbit the nucleus in an outer shell. Farther in, there are 14 electrons in another shell. The next has eight electrons. And the innermost, just two. The Briton James Chadwick unravels the mystery of the nucleus. He's awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics for his discovery of the neutron. The neutron has no electrical charge. Here in iron, 26 protons electrically balance 26 electrons. Within the nucleus, 30 neutrons cluster with the protons. Later work shows they're arranged in shells. For such revelations of the atomic nucleus, these three are awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics. Maria Guppert Mayer of the United States, Hans Jensen of Germany, and the Hungarian-born American Eugene Wigner. The cyclotron, the first atom smasher. More properly called a particle accelerator, it's the invention of America's Ernest Orlando Lawrence. He wins the Nobel Prize for Physics. In 1932, using a particle accelerator designed with a colleague, the British physicist Sir John Cockroft splits the atom. The accelerator is now the tool of discovery. With co-designer Ernest Walton, Cockroft receives the Nobel Prize for Physics. It's the era of big physics. Accelerators get bigger and better, smashing wide open the world beyond the atom. An accelerator works like this. In a gigantic circle, subatomic particles like protons and electrons are accelerated through vacuum tubes to near the speed of light, and they're crashed. So too are antiparticles like positrons and antiprotons. As they collide, they create new species. In a split second, they're gone. But scientists catalogue well over 300 types of subatomic particle and antiparticle. For bringing order to apparent chaos, the American physicist Murray Gell-Mann earns the Nobel Prize for Physics. He sees patterns in these elementary particles and puts them into groups. In the nucleus of this carbon atom, within its protons and neutrons, Gelman postulates smaller entities. He calls them quarks, three of one configuration in each proton, three of another in every neutron. The quarks are held together by gluons, not solid bars, but a continuous exchange of particles. Quarks come in six kinds, combining in different ways to create different hadrons. Hadrons are particles like the proton on the left, and next to it, the neutron. This is another, a species called the lambda, and finally, its relative, the omega. Working with accelerators, three men prove the quark model. The Americans, Jerome Friedman and Henry Kendall, and the Canadian, Richard Taylor. Together, they are awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics. Today, it's thought matter has just three basic groups. The first, quarks and antiquarks. The second, particles called bosons, such as the gluons that hold quarks together. And lastly, leptons, like the electrons of this atom.